and gentlemen, brothers, sisters, friends, comrades on the YouTube, to my beautiful family, and the love of my life, Miss Robin, spoke with her earlier this morning, as per the norm, I'll have it no other way, got good sleep here, I'm in Tumwater, Washington, and oh my goodness, is this a beautiful place, check this place out. I've stayed here before um, at least one time. I may have been here twice. You know, a lot of times I don't remember these places by their name, but I remember them once I roll in or get in the area, and then I can go, oh, yeah, right, I've, I've been here before, sure. So uh, this is one of those places. It's just a, just a beautiful place. It's so wet out. I mean, it's not pouring, it's just everything's wet. So those trees smell delish. Oh my goodness. I need, I could, I'm telling you right now, I could easily live up here. Um, I'm not a woke guy, so I'm not really big fan of the politics, like whatsoever, but I mean, hell, I already live in California. You wanna talk about shitty politics, that's a good place to start. But nonetheless, um, Regardless of that, this is a beautiful freaking place, man. I just love, I love uh, Washington, really the Pac Northwest. I mean, I I don't need to stop at Washington. I do love this place. It's a beautiful place. But you can include Northern California, Oregon, um, Idaho, Western Montana. I mean, this is just... It's just an outstanding place. I love it. It's really cool. It's beautiful up here. Even when the leaves are brown, it's still beautiful up here. You know, this is just a, I don't know. There's something about this place that just grabs a hold of my heart. You know, grabs a hold of my heart. <laughs> anyway, I do love this place. This is, uh, this is a place that I could, uh, I could be happy in a place like this. I love the trees, it just, you know. I live in the desert, you know what I mean? So I don't see a whole lot of this. I mean, there's plenty of it in California, but you gotta go get it. And I don't mind going to get it, believe me. Have Harley will travel, okay? So no problem there. My love loves it just as much as I do. Uh, maybe even more so, I'm not even kidding you, man. She loves, I mean loves riding that Harley Davidson and we don't really get to very much anymore I mean it's just it's not something that we've said yeah you know maybe we ought to back off no we don't back off there's none of that but there's uh just very little time now we're in winter you know what I mean it's raining like hell in Antelope Valley in California right now and I'm not there that's another big thing but we love riding the Harley and we can go get you know scenery similar to this not the same kinds of trees but, uh, you know, we're not far from the High Sierras. Uh, we're not far from the uh, San Gabriel Mountains, the Los Padres uh, mountain range, and the Fraser Park area. We're not far from any of that, especially on a Harley. Nothing's too far on a Harley. Do you hear me? I hope you do. So, yeah, this is one place I could definitely live, and my love would like this kind of place, too. But... Uh, Anyway, I'm getting ready to go to my pick, uh, rather my delivery this morning. Um, I got to leave here. I got to go on the clock here in about 20 minutes. So I just thought I'd throw a quick one out, let you know what's up. This is one of those, you know, you have good days and you have bad days in trucking in terms of mileage, um, hours of service, etc. And this is going to just be one of those shitty days because, um, I'm in Tumwater, which is basically Olympia. I'm in the Olympia area. And uh, I'm only going to, uh, where is this load delivering at? Tacoma. And then from Tacoma, I'm gonna go to a Love's truck stop. I'm gonna spend the night there. And then at 11 o'clock in the morning, I have to be in Kent, Washington to pick up a load to go to Boise. That day will be okay but today i'm only going to drive 40 miles up to my delivery and then i'm going to find what i don't know what another 20 miles to go to my um, 
truck stop for the night. There's not a pilot or flying J uh, close enough without coming all the way back here and then just right back up to Kent tomorrow morning. I thought, well, that's stupid. So I'm going to stay at a Love's. Um, hopefully I can get there early enough to get a spot. I think I will, but we'll have to see how long it takes these people to unload me. I notice I've got a relay code. Relay codes mean that you're going to be uh, unloaded most likely, not every single time, but most likely you're going to be unloaded by lumpers. And they don't give a damn. They do not give a damn. They're unionized, most of them. They don't care about my clock. Not that my clock is super important today, but they don't care whether it is or not. They just don't. Lumpers are a pain in the ass, let me tell you. Not all. I got to, let me, let me dial you in a little bit. Not every single time is it a pain. Um, a lot, it is a lot of the time, I would say 70%. But there is that 30% that those folks get you in, they get you out. And that's what I like because, you know, if if we're not, you know, if we're these wheels ain't turning, we ain't earning. I mean, it's as simple as that. Granted, I do get paid, um, you know, empty miles and loaded miles, whichever the case may be. But still, I don't like, you know, wasting my time. And that's kind of part of trucking. You know, they're, if they don't tell you this in orientation and you're a brand new trucker, they're lying to you. <laughs> or they're withholding information, whichever the case may be. They just want you in the truck. They need somebody to turn the wheels so they can earn. That's part of the deal too. But, you know, it's just, it's part of the thing that it, it's good and bad. And um, this is going to be one of the, it's going to be bad in terms of earning today. Um, you know, I'll get paid for the load that I was that I carried up here and I was glad to do that but at the same time it's like damn dude I get these little short loads too that you know that just um, you know they tangle up your week you know and then I'm going to spend the night here so today is just not going to be very productive um, we're going to unload a load and then go to another truck stop <laughs> I mean <laughs> that's uh, that's what my day is full of today so whatever that's how it goes and that's just about it I'm going to drop this load off I'm going to go to another truck stop no that's not your Wi-Fi that was me in disgust anyway uh, not much else going on oh I do have one other thing I want to mention um, I've got this this uh, we call them a head unit it's the reefer portion of this trailer and uh it's just not, I don't like the defrost mode on this, on this uh, trailer. Uh, the defrost mode lasts way too long. I don't like that because what ends up happening is I've got a negative 10 load on board. And then when uh, the defrost mode kicks on, um, it stays in defrost for way too long longer than any other unit that I can remember um, so I don't understand why it's taken so long I don't really know the the real mechanics of it um, but then the, here's the problem though when it's in defrost mode it isn't cooling the box okay it's just defrosting and it's not meant that it's defrosting the box it's defrosting the refrigerant and the refrigerator unit in the in the engine compartment on the front of the trailer so those of you who are not truckers if you're driving down the road and you see a trailer that has a, a fuel tank underneath it um, bigger heavier doors with uh, like a small hatch at the bottom right so that you can peer in a little bit or maybe even um, take the temperature of the back side of the load that's a reefer trailer every time reefer trailers have fuel tanks if you're coming up from behind them you'll notice that behind the skirting or if there's no skirting you'll see a big tank under there uh, as I said um, the reefer unit needs to be running at least for this load all the time at negative 10 I don't know why they do that but that's what they want when it goes to defrost mode 
This one stays too long. This one, I timed it the other day. This was in defrost mode for 45 minutes. When it came back up to refrigerant mode, it was 30 degrees in the box. It's supposed to be negative 10. Well, it was 30 degrees in there. So now it's got to cool back down because the refrigerator's back on. That's the uh, mode I just went to. It got up to about 30 degrees uh, probably about 20, 25 minutes ago. And now it's cooling back down. Let's go take a look. Okay, so here you can see we're set at negative 10. It's already at zero. So I shouldn't have too much of a problem getting it back to uh, negative 10 before I get to the customer. That's pretty important. But at the same time, it just takes so long to do that. I'm not going to be at the customer for another couple hours. Well, hour and a half or so. So it's got that much time to come back down. This is what I see in my rear view mirror. Uh, it's hard to tell right now with a T and a zero that in this direction it's backwards. So that I can see in my mirror what the actual temp is. You can't even really tell with a minus <laughs> with a minus one. But that two comes up, it's gonna look like a five, but that may take too long. So. But anyway, so that's uh that's how I look to see while I'm driving down the road how my temp is. You see this uh, white T right here. When I see a white T in my rear view mirror, that tells me everything's fine. We're all good. If that turns to a yellow K, which has happened, then there's something wrong with the head unit. So that's uh, that's what I got to pay attention to when I'm rolling down the road. And right now it's uh, negative one, and it, it should keep going down pretty fairly right now. But the problem is, like I said, it got all the way up to 30, and now it's working its way back down, and that just kind of. You know, makes me nervous. I don't want to show up to a vendor while it's in defrost mode and, you know, have a problem that way. You know, while I'm back here, there's my lifesaver right there. My little blue ladder. That gets me in and out of the back of this truck with ease. I can't climb up the side of this truck. My knees and my back and my weight won't allow that. That's tough for me, so I got that thing, and that's my lifesaver, man. I love it. So that's that. Here I am out in it. It just smells like pine, spruce. Man, this place smells fantastic. I love this. But anyway, so hey, we're gonna call it right here. I'm swiveling. You know, I'm in the Olympia area. I've already seen some freaks, so. You know, I'm, I'm not in the red zone, but I'm in the yellow zone. I'm at about a five, four or five here. Uh, not pink. Pink is really low. <laughs> we don't care. We don't care if we're in the pink zone. But anyway, so uh, you you are aware who love you. You do know who love you. It's your boy. It's Bidesdale. We're running Red Leonard's Express. We got a reefer unit on. I done showed you. Okay. I hope y'all have a great Monday. I hope y'all have a great week. And we'll be seeing you in between now and then. Okay? So do that, won't you? Thanks for coming in. Peace.